Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Laurie Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, are your skin's age spots safe or something more serious? We'll deliver answers from a dermatologist. Then, if you have hearing loss, a smartphone is not the answer to keeping in contact. We'll call up another alternative that could be cost-free. We'll meet a patient who put a smile back on their face. Plus, we'll prescribe an exhibit that explores the contributions Jews have made to medicine. And we'll help you pass by probate, even without a trust. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Crow's feet, laugh lines, whatever you call them, we all know that some wrinkles are inevitable as we age, and so are age spots. But while wrinkles aren't really dangerous, some age spots can be hazardous to your health. Dr. Kevin Cooper has joined us in the UH Broadcast Center to explain. Dr. Cooper is the chairman of the Department of Dermatology at University Hospitals. So welcome to our show. All right, pleasure. What do we mean when we talk about age spots? Well, it kind of depends what color you start with. So if you're light-skinned, um, then age spots can be brown spots that start to come up onto your, onto your face, on the back of your hands, your forearms, places that get sun exposure. Mm. Some of them are flat, some of them are raised. If you're darker skinned, um, then you may get bumps on the face or uh, pigmented spots on the palms or the soles or the lips, hmm. or maybe a stripe in the nail. Oh, so okay. those are different things for different people. Okay, so if you see some of that, is it important to see a dermatologist? It is, especially if they're changing or if you feel something hard or crusty and it wasn't there before, or it's a dark spot, which could be a melanoma, uh, which is deadly, uh, can be deadly if not caught or early, or it could be a basal cell carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma, skin cancers, or the precursors, which are actinic keratoses. These are hard spots that eventually can turn into a skin cancer. Okay, so wow, I guess we do need to go. And if you're dark skinned, then those, those lines on the, you know, if you get a line on the nail or a pigmented spot on the palm or soul, that can also be a melanoma. So. Oh. You know, again, it, 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 it's a little bit different in people of color versus not, mm -hmm. um, but changing pigmented spots. Need okay, to be so those at. are the things we're looking for when we're looking at these spots. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Right. You don't want, some of them are just a nothing, some of them can be really a bad something. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, some of us were sun wor worshipers in, in a past life. <laughs> Does that make you at more risk for skin cancers? Right, so first, family history is very important. If someone in your family has had a cancer, that's very important, you need to pay attention to that, ask. Mm -hmm. um, then you can be someone like me who grew up in Florida, I was surfing every day, and so I've, I have pre-cancers, I've had skin cancers, spots, you know, so it definitely matters. If you have freckles, mm -hmm. a kind of a freckled complexion, that puts you at risk for skin cancer and melanoma. And your exposure, history of a sunburn, blistering sunburn in particular, puts you at, at risk. Okay, so I'm at risk. Okay, thank you for All that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so if the dermatologist sees that there might be something of concern, what happens at that point? Well, first you would come in, we take a look at you, and we go, well, this one's just a wisdom spot, this is good. You're getting smarter and smarter. And then, uh, well, that's and, good to know, then, too. Yeah, I got lots of freckles yeah, over here. I got spots, yeah. It doesn't seem to be working, but in any case, um, at least on me. And then, um, but then uh, others we may be suspicious of, and then we would say, oh, we need to take a biopsy. Mm -hmm. We take the biopsy, and then we'd call back a little later, and we go, yeah, it was okay. We're good for a while. Let's see you back next year mm -hmm. or some months. Um, or we say, you know, that's a skin cancer and we have to get it all out. You need to come back or I'm going to send you to a special kind of dermatologic surgeon and it needs to come out in a, in a um, bigger way, make sure we've got all the roots and sideways parts of it. So, mm. for instance, sometimes there's a spot on the face that's kind of called a lentigo maligna, which just looks like freckles at first, but mm -hmm. they kind of grow, but they have like skip areas and you really need a special kind of surgeon So it's sort of like roots out. under the ground or under yeah, the skin? Yeah, kind of like a, you know, a you know, a fire that's underground and mm -hmm. pops up here and pops uh, up there. Okay, yeah. wow, all right, so great information. Yeah, so. We... A bump here, a spot there, we all have them. 
But as Dr. Cooper noted, any skin change should be checked by a dermatologist to determine if they're safe or serious. My thanks to Dr. Cooper for joining us today. Thank you. Learn more by calling the Center for Lifelong Health at University Hospitals at 1-844-312-LIFE, that's 5433, or visit their website, www.uhhospitals.org slash lifelong health. Next, communicating with captions. But first, millions love the island of Maui, and yet, in 1992, 30,000 people petitioned Hawaii's governor to change its name. Can you call out what they wanted the island to be called? We'll drop anchor with the answer when we return. What do Trump administration initiatives mean if you have $500,000 or more in liquid assets? They mean complex challenges and exceptional opportunities. Hi, I'm Jim Lineweaver, president of Lineweaver Wealth Advisors. To learn more about these challenges and opportunities, we've organized a panel of financial, tax, and legal experts with over 30 years experience. Please join us for dinner at the award-winning Hyde Park Prime Steakhouse. Dates and times are on your screen. Call today. Complimentary dinner seating is limited. Fervent TV fans held out hope that Maui could be renamed Gilligan's Island. However, the governor was not swayed and the idea sank. Texting may be trending, but there's nothing like a voice-to-voice -voice phone call with the special people in your life to really connect and communicate. However, there can be a hang-up if you have a hearing loss. So we put a call out to Lori Rosenberg, who's here with help. Lori is with Outreach Education and Installations supporting CapTel, closed caption telephones, which you can possibly get for free. So That's welcome right. to the show. Free Thanks. is always good. It's good to be here. <laughs> now, before we talk about how the, um, the fact that it's free and how it works, first, let us know who might this phone be useful for. All right. First and foremost, it's for someone who has a hearing loss. So that could be someone with a hearing aid or without a hearing aid but someone who struggles to hear on the phone. And that would be the person who says, huh, what, repeat yourself, or avoids talking on the phone at all. And someone who uses closed captioning for TV. Because often when there's a hearing loss, it's both the phone and the TV that causes the individual problems or struggles. Okay, now you mentioned that it's closed captioning. So is that like the TTY, um, the text telephone? Um, the text telephone was, if you're, if you're the user of the individual with the hearing loss, I'm typing something to you, you're reading it, and then you're typing something back to me. With the CapTel, we're actually having a real-time person-to-person conversation where you're able to hear what I'm, able to, what I'm saying to you, but you're also seeing everything that I've said to you. Okay, so show me how it works. All right, so again, everything that's said on the conversation will appear on the screen, and that's good, bad, or otherwise. <laughs> there is a volume control, because we know it's not always um, volume, but it's also tone, so that some individual can adjust the volume, and they also can adjust the tone for maximum quality. We have a speakerphone, so individuals who want to use a speakerphone, they can do that. We have an answering machine, so oftentimes we have difficulty understanding what someone's saying on a message. Yes. And so it will print out everything that the caller said so you can read the message. And there's several other features. We can adjust the volume, the font, things that will really make it personal for the individual. Okay, so it, look, it sounds like when you're talking about this that the, the captioning comes up sort of like your talk to text on your <laughs> smartphone. Is that how it works? Um, in a very small way. We know that when we use our voice to text, there are really kind of funny and awkward words that come up. In autocorrect, everybody yeah, hates yeah. that. <laughs> um, so we have a captionist. We have a real person who is using a voice to text software, but that software is trained to that individual's voice so that you are getting the best, most accurate interpretation and we're also adding a dimension to the conversation because if the captionist hears a dog barking or a baby crying, they are adding that in to the captions. And then voice to text, 
you're just getting information. Here you're getting depth, dimension, and emotion connected to the conversation. So like a, a real telephone conversation. It is, we want you to hear everything that you can. The captions are there to support you to have a complete conversation. Okay, and we said in the beginning that people with hearing issues can get this free, so tell us how. All right, there are three important things that you need in order to get the phone, well maybe four. You have to have a hearing loss. All right. You need internet in the home, and you need a home phone line, and a certificate. The certificate which is signed by a physician, an audiologist, or a hearing instrument specialist. It's submitted to CapTel. Once that process is completed, it triggers myself and my team members to give the individual a call. We set up an appointment. We go out to the home, and we will set the phone up. We'll set up all the distinct features for them. And most importantly, we will make test calls so that they know how to use the phone. When we're setting up the answering machine, we'll leave messages so that we practice picking up messages so that they are comfortable using the phone when we leave. But we also have a customer service button, which they can get 24 hours a day, seven Ooh. days a week, so they've got that help. And we do this all at no cost. This that's a fantastic. Totally. Yeah, that's great. great for people in our community. So sure. great information. Now hear this. With this type of phone, there is a way to enjoy your loved one's voices and see what they're saying. To find out more, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Lori Rosenberg for dialing us into this option. For more information, call Outreach Education and Installations at 216 Five five six four zero seven zero, or log on to www.oeius.org. Next, a story of a smile restored. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. All aboard for colorful fall foliage. Look at the leaves as you ride the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad on their Fall Flyer train ride. Enjoy autumn on the rails through October 29th on a two-hour non-stop trip through the National Park. The ticket to more information? Call 1-800-468-4070, extension 1, or click to www.cvsr.com. Sometimes an event can be a kind of deadline and help us to move to make a change that we might have been putting off. That's the case with a patient of dentist Steve Marsh. He's here with a story of curing the wedding bell blues. So welcome back to the show here, Steve. Thanks so much, Lori. Now this wasn't a bride, it was the bride's mother, right? Right, we all want to look good and the bride had beautiful teeth and mom said I'm going to have pictures taken. And she's been a big fan of Golden Opportunities for years and she said, I've had your number, I've had, I just didn't pick it up. And now that she had an event, her daughter's wedding, and she wanted to look good for the pictures and good look, and look good as she walked down the aisle, right. she decided this was the impetus she needed. And so many people need an event, whether it's a reunion or a wedding or a, a get together with family, whatever, that's what makes them pick up the phone and make the call. And this was a big step for her too, right? Because she didn't like dentists particularly. I, I'm not sure she didn't like dentists. She didn't like having dental work done. Oh, uh, okay. So she had had an experience as, as a kid, as many of us did, who are in our age group and older, where maybe the anesthetic wasn't as successful. Maybe the dentist said he, didn't, he or she didn't believe in it. And so that experience stayed with her all these years. And, and that happens very often when I meet a person for the first time. I'll say, what, what sort of kept you away? And then we, that's why we sit down together to explore things. Th uh, this is Barbara, and, and she was kind enough to allow us to show her picture mm -hmm. um, when she came in to me. You can see almost a tentative look, and she said she really wasn't comfortable smiling. She had been missing a front tooth. That's a partial, the old type. A partial goes in and out. It is not permanent. If you look closely, the viewer's right. You can see that metal clasp that was there to help uh, hook that tooth on. So a very tentative smile. So we sit down with our patients, uh, again, especially when they've said they haven't had a good experience before. We want them to feel comfortable. We take them on a tour of the office, and then we actually, in a sense, take a tour of their mouth. This is me with a different patient showing her what her smile looks like. Um, this is one of our computers that we have, and we have a lot of digital things so we can look closely. So this is Barbara. And you can see, 
as, as happened, the lower teeth were never great. They've shifted, which happens to all of us generally as we get older. They were certainly very dark. Her focus was on the upper, and the teeth were very uneven. If you look closely, Lori, on these before pictures, you can even see some darkness within the tooth. So some of it is stained, some of it is aged, some of it was decay. With the partial out, Barbara, uh, Barbara, Lori, excuse me, if you look up in the mouth, this is the view that many dentists get, you can see with that tooth missing. Oftentimes when you're young, you may have had an accident, you may have had a root canal, you lose the tooth. And looking up into the mouth, this is what we saw. And so she had had some consultations, talked about implants. She really wasn't a candidate. It also was like six weeks before the wedding. So I said, we, we can look at doing a permanent bridge. So we did a mock-up, which is we wanted to give her a sense of what it would look like, and that's on the teeth with a mock-up to show her what we thought we could accomplish on a permanent basis. That's in plastic. You remember the picture looking up at the palate? Right. That's all porcelain. Again, no metal anymore, Lori, in our practice, in many practices. This is zirconium. It's a very, very strong porcelain. She has this beautiful look, and this is a picture that she put on Facebook with her husband. So she looked great at the wedding. Looked wonderful. You can see the brightness in that smile, and something she said brought her so much confidence. Uh, and I love that she put it all over Facebook. She also put a thing about, thanks, Dr. Marsh, for my oh, smile. Oh, how nice. Uh, very gratifying for us, and, and just a wonderful feeling. So we got rid of the old metal, the old partial, gave her something permanent that she's confident on, and she hopes to move forward with some more work in the near future All as right. we move on. We'll hope there's another event in her family to bring her <laughs> in and, and keep that smile the way it looks. Absolutely. So weddings, reunions, a new job. While these may cause you to put a new smile on your calendar, you don't really need such a deadline. You can have the smile you want right now. For help, give Steve a call. His number's next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440-461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, Beyond Chicken Soup. It's time to get up and go. An exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and we are here today to show you not only how to work your important shoulder muscles, but also the triceps in the back of the arm. Every woman wants to work that area. You ready to do it? I was born right All now. right, let's do it. We got our bands here. We're gonna start with the bands under our backside because we wanna be seated on the band just to make sure they stay in place. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna start with our hands at about a 45 degree angle and our palms just above our shoulders. We're simply gonna press that band up above the head, just about touch and bring them back down to the starting position, okay? We're looking for 12 to 15 repetitions, slow and controlled movement and also please do not rock back and forth, maintain that good posture. How you feeling, Lori? Oh, taller already. Taller already, all right, yeah. yeah. That's good, you got some strong shoulders there, everybody. Okay, 12 to 15, make sure you're breathing. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. Giving all people access to quality health care isn't just a current debate. It was also a challenge in the early part of the 20th century, particularly for those in the Jewish population. A new exhibit at the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage chronicles the work Jews undertook to provide medical care for themselves and others. David Schaefer is here to preview Beyond Chicken Soup, Jews and Medicine in America. David is the managing director of the Maltz Museum. Welcome to our show. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, now we find numerous, lots and lots of Jewish physicians, but that wasn't always the case. Uh, that's correct. In the early 20th century, there was rising anti-Semitism, and as a result, the Jewish community was shunned from uh, uh, hospitals and uh, generally uh, denied access to uh, medical care. So this, is, this exhibit is showing how the Jewish population kind of had to do it for themselves, right? So what did they do? Well, they went ahead and built Jewish hospitals. Uh, first, uh, they did so to train uh, Jewish physicians and um, uh, later a place to uh, uh, work. Okay, and to serve... The, the discrimination was, there was quotas on uh, Jewish doctors working at uh, oh other uh, hospitals in the area. Okay, so they were gonna help to serve the Jewish population. Um, and so they, they 
built hospitals, they started teaching, and that includes places like right here in the Cleveland area, right? Absolutely, our beloved Mount Sinai Hospital uh, was created to improve uh, health care uh, for, the, for the general community. And especially for the Jewish population. Correct. Um, and at that time, developing the medical field and research and treatment provided the Jewish population, I mean, a way to take their rightful place in the society, right? Absolutely, uh, Lori. Um, uh, medicine was a platform for the Jewish immigrants at the turn of the 20th century uh, as a way to assimilate, uh, to give back, and to fight for uh, civil rights. Okay, and do you have a story that you can share about this whole time in, in history? Well, I don't think uh, any story um, in Cleveland, Ohio should be uh, anything other than our beloved Mount Sinai. In 1892, the Young Ladies Hebrew Association began raising funds for the sick and needy. Um, that was the first Mount Sinai, uh, East 37th Street, a converted house, a 29-bed uh, um place of uh, patient care, oh boy. later moved to East 105th Street where it, it thrived for decades. Um, in 1906, uh, one out of every 10 physicians in Cleveland were Jewish. Uh, because of the rising anti-Semitism, there was no place for them to train or uh, to be employed. Uh, so Mount Sinai served an important function at the turn of the 20th century. All right. Great history. I'm glad you're just bringing it to light here at the uh, at the museum. Yep, uh, we are. Uh, the story is fascinating. It's uh, something to celebrate, and also uh, it has relevancy uh, for today's uh, discussions in healthcare. All right. Beyond Chicken Soup, Jews and Medicine in America just opened at the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage and will be on exhibit until April of next year. We prescribe a visit to get educated on the historic fight for equality in healthcare, which also does look to the future of medicine in America. My thanks to David for joining us today. It's my pleasure, thank you. Find out more by calling the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage at 216-593-0575 or click to www.maltzmuseum.org. Next, avoiding probate problems. Right now, Proton Therapy, a revolutionary treatment for many types of cancer, is available for the first time in Ohio and only at University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center. That's the future of cancer care. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Right now, the trusted experts of University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center and the most advanced cancer-fighting technologies are in 17 community locations. That's leading-edge care, where you're most comfortable. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Avoidance of probate. Everyone tells you you should avoid probate, but is it really that bad? Here to discuss probate and the ways to avoid it is my law partner, Michael Solomon. Hi, Lori. Let's start right at the very beginning. Okay. What is probate? Well, probate's just the paperwork that you need to do to transfer an asset from yourself on your passing to whoever you bequeath it to. For example, you own a home and you leave it in your will to my son. You pass away. How do we retitle that property in the name of your son? That's probate. That's the process, the paperwork. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound really that bad. So why do people dread probate so much? Well, it's time-consuming and it can be costly. For example, to, when you go through probate, you have to file the will, have to file some other paperwork with the probate court. You have to give notices to the beneficiaries. You have to do an inventory of assets. You have to do an appraisal. It, it, it's not so bad, but it starts adding costs because you need an attorney to do all of that typically, so that adds mm -hmm. costs. Uh, the executor is going to charge an executor's fee. If there's real estate, you're going to have to pay for an appraisal. ARP estimates that it costs around 3% of the value of the assets to probate uh, an estate. So, you know, that, it, it, it's not, that drives the cost, what I just mentioned, but also sometimes it's the complication of the will or if there's a lot of squabbling, Ooh. that starts adding to the cost. Yeah, of course. Now, we talk about trusts on the show all the time, and I know that's one way to avoid probate, but they can be expensive. So are there other ways to avoid probate without having to have a trust set up? Yeah, well, fortunately in Ohio, about every asset you own, you can avoid probate if you do the paperwork properly. You know, most people are familiar with joint and survivor accounts. They're bank accounts, CDs, savings accounts, brokerage accounts. Joint and survivor account between a husband and wife is very easy. Husband passes away, wife takes a death certificate to the broker, 
or the bank and, and moves it over to her own account, avoids probate. I, don't, I recommend that with a husband and wife, but not with children. So for example, if, if you have an account and you want to avoid probate and you put it in joint survivor with your son and your son gets a divorce or has a creditor problem, you know, that ex-wife or that creditor is going to possibly make a claim on the account, which you'll be able to prove is your money eventually, but it'll cost you time yeah, and why money. why get into that to begin with? That's right. right. So if you want to avoid probate, name your son or your daughter, whoever, a beneficiary of your account. It's called a, for a bank account, it's called a POD, payable on death, a brokerage account's TOD, transfer on death. and avoids probate, but you have no risk that any claims against the beneficiary are going to be your issue. Okay, well, that's a good tip. But we're almost out of time. Um, are there other ways to avoid probate as well? Well, there are a lot. You know, retirement accounts, 401k plans, real estate, annuities, life insurance, they're all ways to avoid probate. I don't have time to talk about it today, but I'm doing a seminar with the Lineweaver Group. It's coming up shortly. It's at the uh, Hyde Park Restaurant in Beechwood, and uh, it's going to talk about a lot of issues like this. We have three experts on the panel with lots of years of experience. <laughs> and... Um, you know, so it fills up fast, so if you're interested, there should be a number on the screen in a moment, and give that number a call to set up. Because uh, it fills up fast, That's right? That's right, fills up. You've done them in the past, and yes. there's lots of people That's there. That's right. That's right. All right, great information. Now, if you're concerned probate could be a problem, you should go over your estate plan, and if possible, use some of these techniques to avoid probate. For help, give Mike a call. The number's next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at one 888 Two three six fifty one seventy three for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us on next week's show. Not getting enough sleep will help you put that problem to bed. Then we'll tell you how traditions can revitalize your relationship and we'll reveal the role that technology can play in the estate planning area. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.